guest today is a friend, Deb Skugel. She and her husband came to Goodfellow about a year ago. He is Lieutenant Colonel Greg Skugel, an adjunct on our school board to help us uh, bridge information between the school district and the leadership at Goodfellow. And now Deb has, in recent weeks, gotten a great job mm -hmm a liaison for the schools and the children from Goodfellow with mm -hmm. all the schools in our area. Is that pretty much sum it up? Yes, I'm the school liaison officer for Goodfellow Air Force Base and I advocate for the military families for all their educational needs and concerns. I also work with the local schools to educate them on the lifestyle of our military children and I work with the leadership of Goodfellow Air Force Base, so I liaise with all three. Well, it takes a team, mm -hmm. and your husband works on a piece of that communication, and now you work on several other pieces so mm -hmm. that there is not lag time between a need of a family and their children no matter where they go to school mm -hmm. and with that school district. And we have been very blessed throughout my time here to, in recent years, uh, particularly have a liaison. The good fellow didn't have one for mm -hmm. a while. And right. I'm very grateful uh, to have you, Deb, because you have uh, great people skills and mm -hmm. are, you also understand from having been a military spouse for how many years? I've been a spouse for 19 years. So yes. you have walked in shoes, lived in foreign countries, mm -hmm. and as well as stateside, and know that um, it takes a team. And, mm -hmm. and you stated that uh, military families have sometimes unique uh, circumstances mm -hmm. and so that doesn't mean that they're not they're they're I was one we were children mm -hmm. like other children but then occasionally there's a need uh, for extra support Right, absolutely. And that's what I see your role primarily is mm -hmm. uh, you know the system Mm -hmm. the military mm -hmm. system and you know that schools even though each school is unique that there are channels and we've tried and our community knows and my board knows we've tried to break down remove speed bumps and obstacles but mm -hmm. even still there's times that a child needs extra support. That's right. And like you mentioned, so for 19 years I've been a military spouse and we've traveled around. We've moved eight times in the past 19 years and we've been to three countries and we've traveled a lot and you know we have two sons as well. I have a freshman and I have a seventh grader and they both are constantly moving of course and attending new schools and so I see both personally and professionally the challenges faced by military children. Uh, it's very hard to leave a place that you've grown comfortable with. Uh, the average military child moves up to nine times or has attended up to nine different schools by the time he graduates high school. So they are saying goodbye to a lot of friends and sports teams uh, and loved ones as well, uh, a sense of identity with the, the town that they lived in. And so when they move on to another location, they have to create new friends and get familiar. Sometimes it's hard for high schoolers especially mm -hmm. because they've gotten a certain classes and credits, mm -hmm. AP courses or things that they're interested in, and then they move to a new school and have to continue on that same path. And so uh, someone in my position is able to help them with that, to get them into the right schools, to work with administration, new Dr. Bonds, and uh, make sure that the children are able to graduate on time, that maybe a course they've taken at their prior location will translate to a course that's required here. Also, I deal a lot with the uh, gifted and talented students who may arrive and they're already in a program to continue on that path as well. And I have an emphasis in children with special needs. 
So to make sure that they're reasonably accommodated and they get into a school system that can meet their educational and physical needs. Well, you have a big job because mm -hmm. they're, even though in the grand scheme of military bases, Goodfellow is a smaller base, we still have um, around a thousand children tied in some way to Goodfellow. Some are children of the civilian uh, workers, but often civilian workers are retired military and have moved quite a bit with their children. Mm -hmm. So we still consider um, them when we're counting children who need an extra set of eyes and ears to help mm -hmm. cut through any red tape so that those children can be very successful. Right. You're, you mentioned last about children with special needs and mm -hmm. I know that uh, I think we have a magnificent uh, special ed department at San Angelo. I know that that is extremely traumatic for a parent with special needs children. Mm -hmm. It adds a whole nother layer of getting new doctors and new uh, programs for their children. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel good about helping you help parents and families that come with children with special needs ranging from uh, autism and uh, cerebral palsy and uh, to learning disabilities, mm -hmm. just getting them the right, all the resources that, to help them be successful. Right, and we're starting up a new one. So I'm putting in a plug. We're starting up a support group on base for families with children with exceptional needs. Nice. So we are, we'll be starting up uh, and we'll have different topics every quarter. Uh, like you said, autism spectrum will be one of them. The top 10 basics of education will be our first one in September 23rd. And so we're hoping that with a support network that uh, parents can learn what resources are available in San Angelo, what other people have found successful, and uh, how to uh, meet the needs of their child. Well, I found through my own family of having some special needs uh, nephews that those kind of, of groups are extremely helpful for the well-being of the families to, mm -hmm. even if their children have a, a different um, uh, need, to help to have parents that can support each other. So I applaud you all in getting some uh, discussion groups going like that, and we will help provide uh, speakers mm -hmm. uh, if if that's appropriate for you. Thank you, I appreciate that. What else have, what has been a nice uh, surprise for you or anything, because you're new to this position, mm -hmm. uh, you're, learning, you're, lear you're learning something all the time, aren't you? Yes, I am. Well, of course, the nicest surprise was just moving here and finding the community so welcoming. Uh, as I said, we've moved around so much, and I would definitely put San Angelo as one of the top welcoming communities for our military families. We felt it right away, uh, the support for our, our military folks, I, and that gives me so much encouragement and hope for the children as well as our military children come in, knowing that the community is so welcoming. And if I felt it as an adult, I'm sure the children have seen it as well uh, and, and would like to exemplify that too. And uh, so I feel that they would be good sponsors for our military children coming into the schools. So that was fantastic, nice. just being greeted so nicely. And uh, the, the community, the support, um, the steak. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about my favorite things, right? Was it a nice welcoming surprise? <laughs> well, that's all fair. <laughs> we do have some uh, wonderful people in this city. Mm -hmm. I can just so often am uh, blessed when someone extra kind uh, comes up and offers uh, encouragement and support. And I we want to support you and mm -hmm. I cannot think of a problem that one of your military uh, 
children will have that we will have any problem finding a group of caring adults to sit around a table and try to make it better. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that is that is not true every place. And mm -hmm. I think we can do it quickly because it needs to happen. If, if a family has a challenge, regardless mm -hmm. what it is, um, we need a support network uh, which means all of us together mm -hmm. to try to meet that need. Because sometimes uh, it might be a school person, it might be an on-base person, it might be another community organization. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been amazed at how quickly a group can gather together and try to help make something better, especially if it has to do with children. Mm -hmm. I'm finding the principals very responsive to any requests I have. You know, just last week I had just a small request. I had a military mother tell me, you know, I heard there's a grandparents' day coming up, and you know, at the school, she said, you know, with military members, it's very hard, almost impossible, to have yes. your grandparents to attend a, you know, a grand not grandparents' day, a grandparents' luncheon. And um, so the military mom said, you know, this is, um, it's, it's really hard on my son because he'd really like to be with his grandparents and, and everyone else will have their grandparents there. And so I contacted the school principal and oh, she was fantastic. She said right away, oh, she can have, any, you know, the child can have anyone special come in that day. And she said, I'll make note of that. So we won't just call it Grandparents Day. We'll include grandparents or someone special to lunch yes. day. Yes. And a quick solution um, that nice. would make the child feel comfortable nice. and happy. So, uh, yes, the the uh, I think the community bends over backwards for us, recognizes right away uh, any of our needs. They just have to know. They just need yes. And the communication that's where has to be your there. role, I believe, mm -hmm. as well as your husband's role, has served so well. You can't always know all the needs until mm -hmm. somebody points them out, right. and so. Uh, but you make it extra easy to help work it out, as does uh, your husband, Greg, um, because when you're approached in a kind way, it sure is easier. <laughs> so I, we greatly appreciate both of you. The uh, Air Force chose you very well. Oh, thank you. Now, what are some of the things, give our school people as well as parents and community members, what are your growing understanding of special needs, and I don't mean uh, physical needs like we mm -hmm. were just discussing, Maybe but challenges? challenges of military children besides mm -hmm. what we've already alluded to, uh -huh. which is making new friends often, right. uh, uprooting and moving. What are some other ways we could be alert? Mm -hmm. Well, it reminds me of um, a time when, prior to coming to San Angelo, we lived in Singapore and we were on vacation in Malaysia. And our sons were playing with other kids. And one of the other children's mom came over to me and she said, I, she said, I don't mean to pry, but I asked your son where he's from and he said, I don't know. And, and I was thinking, well, that's right. He probably doesn't know. He was born in Florida and has moved four times since then. He, he doesn't have a place where he's from. Yes. So I think we have to be sensitive of that for our children, that they're, they are global citizens. Yes. The military children um, are from all over the place, and they don't necessarily have a location that they call home or where they're from necessarily. So I think um, communication is important. Wording can be important. Uh, I, but I told... Um, my son afterwards, I had a conversation with him, and I said, you know, it's okay that you don't, you're not from a specific spot. I said, but you know, maybe you can say where you live currently. You yes. know, you are, I currently live in Singapore is what he, he could have responded. So yes. um, just like wording of, of that nature, uh, just to be aware, uh, for example, with uh, children whose parents are deployed, they may feel stress because their, their, their parent is deployed, but they also may feel fear of, of loss mm -hmm. because oftentimes deployments are you know in, in hazardous locations. So they they might be going through more than just the the stress that you'd expect from deployment. They may be also be um, feeling anxiety as well. So you have to uh, we, through communication through asking the child you know if their behavior is changing or um, they seem very very down. 
Uh, that's where I would like to step in as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we have resources on our base specifically for children of deployed families, and uh, we can we can help them too. But just to be a little sensitive to the military children, there's a lot going on on base um, with their with their families as well. Uh, and I think the schools already get that. Mm -hmm. I think the, the community, we try. yes, I, mm -hmm. I think the community as a whole understands that. I find um, that, that you know Goodfellow is a strong um, partner with yes. the schools and uh, th the principals and the staff are all very understanding of what the military children are going through. So the challenges are not just you know transitioning and trying to make new friends, which I would like to emphasize on in my role is to help with that transition, uh, but also with the stress of what's going on in the family at that time, specifically the deployments. Well, I have experienced <clears throat> myself uh, what you've just described and I think as children get older especially toward college they realize <clears throat> that being a global citizen and not necessarily having roots in one place has provided a richness of experiences but it takes a certain age I think before young people realize that. <clears throat> um, I do know that uh, unlike early in my career when I had for 20 years children from Fort Hood, um, those uh, children by and large, their parents were deployed maybe twice in my early years. And now uh, we've got children at Goodfellow who uh, have their, one or more of their parents have been deployed six, seven, and I heard met a couple that in recent weeks that the nine, nine times. So I think that that is an, in the last decade, an added stress of the media, and I'm not a media basher at all, mm -hmm. but unlike when my father was deployed, I never saw the conditions of where he was deployed or the dangers. Mm -hmm. So well, I'll, we talk a lot with our staff about being very conscious of that. And I think uh, that is all the more reason for you uh, because we get new teachers each year, n new principals that may not have heard us talk about it as many times. And so uh, we welcome you helping all of us uh, be aware of things. If we haven't, as my dad used to say, walked in a person's shoes, mm -hmm. we really don't know. <laughs> we think we know, mm -hmm. but we haven't. And I think that's what you and I can help, is people to see that picture of walking in that child's shoes. Yes. And be very mm -hmm. alert to, as you mentioned, signs. You're uh, going to be busy because there are a lot of uh, children in the Tom Green County area and uh, children that go to, uh, that are part of the military live in the city and mm -hmm. in our surrounding areas. And so you have a big field to cover, don't you? I do, yes. And I hope I'm relieving the burden of some of the schools as well for their admin and staff. For example, when new families, new military families are arriving, I encourage them to contact the school liaison prior to contacting the school so that I can let them know what they need to hand carry from their current Good. location. Good. You know, birth certificates, immunizations, um, IEP paperwork, things of that nature that they can come prepared so when they do visit the school, they do have everything that they need. Uh, to fill out the paperwork, uh, to answer questions. I can answer a lot of the questions. You have an awesome website for SAISD. Most of the questions that people ask are answered right there on that, that website. Uh, the transfer papers, everything's right there that they need. So I'm hoping that I can um, cushion some of the phone calls that come in and, and get people prepared prior to them going to the school and registering their children. So I hope it to work that way. And I'd like to find out what other ways I can help the schools to relieve any kind of burden they have, commonly asked questions that they're getting that maybe I can uh, post or, or do, okay. you know, accommodate um, incoming families in such a way that they don't have to contact the school so much. They can contact me, I can be their point of contact, their one-stop shop for all school needs and concerns. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, do you, 
I want you to know we are thrilled that you are in your position. Thank you. And I know that you make families uh, and extended families feel uh, can more relaxed because they tr they will trust you quickly. Know that we're there as an equal partner, mm -hmm. and you won't have to beg. <laughs> we're there to help any way we can, and I mean that sincerely, Deb. Thank you so much. Welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you having me here today to help spread the word about our program. We'll do it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you.